Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Um, I don't know why I asked that. You can't answer, but hey. Uh, so it is the... I've lost all track. Uh, it is day 16 of lockdown. I don't know what day, date it is. <laughs> what date is it? It is... I don't know. I don't know either. It is Sunday. Yeah, I know, I know it's Sunday, but what date is it? Who cares? <laughs> I don't know. It is Sunday the 5th of April. Yes, because yesterday was Poppet and Totem's birthday. And yes. tomorrow is my Nana's birthday. And have you got a card? Well, I was going to do a second... Oh, going to... Right, yeah, because yeah, I haven't been able to get to the shops. Yeah. I don't know if you know, there's been a thing on. Yeah, you've it's been, been able to get to the computer, though, haven't to you? To the shops. Computer? What? No. Moon. No, thank you. No computer. Thank you. <laughs> All right. um, uh, but anyway, right. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, call me a moon pig. This yeah. Is a, imagine what she calls me when the camera's on. <laughs> <are they? laughs> I'm going to start calling you moon pig. Why? Because <laughs> this has amused me. I will weep openly. <laughs> will you? And normally I'd say I will weep openly in the streets, but I won't. I'll stay in. <laughs> I will weep openly in, in the bedroom. House, in the privacy of my own home. <laughs> As the law dictates. Yes. Well, that's uh, well. That leads us on to one of the things that we wanted to talk about, doesn't it? Um, so yes, uh, social distancing. Um, so uh, yes, as the law dictates, um, mm. we are allowed to uh, travel only for essential purposes, so either to work or to or from getting essential groceries. Um, or if you're helping someone vulnerable, i.e., so you're dropping groceries or something to someone who is self isolating. And once a day for exercise, which is good, because otherwise Lucy wouldn't get any walks. Mm. Um, however, uh, people are sort of taking a piss a bit, it seems, or at least that's the sort of tale we're being told. Um, I kind of think this is a bit of a mixed bag, because the, the sort of... They, they keep... Blah, 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 blah. They keep uh, showing sort of pictures of people in busy parks, and it looks very crowded, but actually... They are usually like people on their own and people in like maybe twos or threes who might live together, who are walking somewhere. And as long as you're kind of keeping your distance from people who don't live with you, uh, that should be OK. But basically, I think lots of people over this weekend, it's been a very sunny weekend. Uh, so we're heading out to parks, particularly in sort of busy areas like London and uh, sunbathing, parks, having picnics. That's not part of the deal, is it? You no. You exercise and then you go home yeah. again. Or you and go to I, the shop and then you go home again. And yeah. yeah, so that's like, that's not really part of your exercise. And yeah, you might think, well, I'm keeping my distance. And so does it matter if I'm moving or if I'm lying down? But if everybody does that, then that becomes quite a crowded park. Mm. And then even if you are keeping your distance, sort of somebody who has passed through may have coughed and you might pick it up on your face or something you touch. So the more people are out and around and using the same areas, the worse it is uh, for transmission. So basically, people need to stop doing that um, because I suspect they are gearing us up ready for harsher lockdown measures. Um, at every stage of this, I've noticed sort of a couple of days before a rule has changed or a rule has been implemented, they've kind of laid the groundwork for it in the mm. daily press conference. So to begin with, for example, it was saying we'd rather you avoid going to pubs and leisure activities, but they didn't actually explicitly say that you couldn't. And it's sort of gone like that. Now, this time today, Matt Hancock has sort of said um, there are no imminent plans to uh, change the lockdown measures, uh, but we could do so if people continue to flout the rules. Now, I suspect they plan to anyway, but they're sort of preparing people for it by doing that. Uh, mm. That's my suspicion. Um, I, I'm just ground basing that on sort of the pattern so far. I don't have that in any like firm uh, writing from anyone, but I that's what I suspect is going on there. The thing is, we've been very quick to criticise the government mm. over the past couple of weeks. We've not shied away from doing that. But if they do have to enforce it, a uh, harsher lockdown, you know, it can't be said that people have been doing everything they could no. and that people have been all behaving themselves. And it's, I think, you know, the majority of people are, I think, but it doesn't take too many dickheads to ruin it for the rest of, of them us. Out there. Yeah, and well, we've, we've both experienced it. Um, sort of uh, we're being very very good in fact if anything we're being stricter with ourselves than we really need to be for example with sort of the social distancing and the self-isolating when it probably wasn't necessary and all those sorts of things we're just like erring on the side of caution consistently trying not to do sort of multiple trips to the shop instead waiting until we need a lot and doing like one big shop 
um, just because the more visits to the shop, the more that's more chance of cost, like partially for self preservation, but also for spreading it around. The mm. more times you go out and the more times you go somewhere where there are other people, the more risk you've got of spreading it about, picking it up, passing it on. Um, so just trying to minimize as much as possible. We have to obviously walk the dog every day, but trying very much to sort of do that mm -hmm. and avoid people while we're at. You've been having trouble with dog yeah, walks. Yeah, well, um, I mean, because we haven't, we don't live near a big park. We've not experienced that side of things directly, but I've been having my own experiences when I've been out walking. And I should say to begin with, very lucky in as much as we've got this beautiful dog that I go out and walk every day in a beautiful bit of wood near our house. It's very convenient, it's very pretty, it's been nice weather. Um, so, And I'm re aware that, once again, that puts us in a position that's better than a lot of people. Yeah, people um, in like built-up cities and stuff, mm. particularly if they don't... Because back when I lived in London, for example, I didn't have a garden, I didn't have a balcony, I had no way of being outside without making use of, say, parks or just standing around in the street. And actually, just being able to sit outside in the garden is really good for your mental health, I think. Mm. Like, feel the sun, feel the breeze... Have a cup of tea outside, so you're still being responsible. You're staying away from other people. Not having that option, I do feel sorry for people who so don't have that. So I'm about to do some complaining, but I want to make it clear that I am aware of mm -hmm. uh, the luck and the privilege that I do have. But it could be even better if people could just be a bit more responsible when they're out. So, like, for example, when I was in the woods yesterday, I passed someone who smelt very strongly of cannabis. And that is... How do you know what that smells fine. like, Fine. Let's not get into it. <laughs> I, I think that is fine. You can have some cannabis on your exercise. Yep. As long as you're not inviting your deal around. Yeah. I, I don't know where he's got it from. Maybe he's had it since... Maybe he stopped past. I don't know. I don't, I don't care. You can, you can smoke while he's on his exercise. Good luck to him. But a little further along, I then found a group of lads um, drinking cans around a bonfire. Now... <laughs> Yeah. It's possible they're all part of the same household. Unlikely possible. though, isn't it? Feels unlikely. Yeah. But also, even if they are, they're allowed out for exercise. You can't have a bonfire and some cans. That's not the no. game, is it? That's not... And I suspect they're doing that in a wood so that like, they're not being... Because if they were doing that in a park, like people would see them and they would, they would be asked to disperse. So they're mm. meeting in the woods for an illicit bonfire and hangout. Um, but it's not just sort of blokes... I do apologise. We've just had a notification come up on my phone, which I should have turned off for this. But uh, apparently Boris Johnson's just gone into hospital. I, that's all I know. That was my mum saying, blimey, Boris has gone into hospital. But, okay. So that's breaking news. So that might be an update. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, oh, sorry, I'm just, get, I'm just getting a notification. <laughs> apparently, breaking news. Uh, so we'll find out about what's going on with that. And I dare say mention that tomorrow. But yeah, if you just saw us both sort of go... Ooh, that's what that was. That's what that was. But, um, uh, yeah, it's mm. not just, though, you know groups of young lads misbehaving it's also like there was there was a family out today and i've got a very friendly dog they had a very friendly dog both dogs run towards each other that's absolutely fair can't really help, can't with the help dogs. That. that's what dogs do we're trying to call them back but lucy, lucy has this. no respect for me and, <laughs> and it's tricky but i'm trying to maintain a distance but there's about seven of them in this family a lot of young children and maybe if you're out with your family and your young children, maybe tell them. The kids, just tell them, them hang back if you see anybody else. Yeah, if you see Let a stranger, give them a bit of space. Don't continue your relentless march. For, I mean, <laughs> it's not, not bad advice in life generally with kids. Don't let them walk towards strangers. But right now, in especially the just... Yeah. I think we've covered this of, before. The woods are full of pubs, remember? The woods are full of pubs. <laughs> and, um, but... Yeah, yeah, it's just, just sort of, um, it's making it more tricky because it, there are narrow paths. You can't really, it's very difficult to keep sort of two metres apart. And that's basically if both parties are trying their best to sort of keep a distance. If I'm going to keep my distance from my whole family, but then four kids are just kind of marching by, all doing their own thing. Yeah. Um, and then I came across, uh, I think, a teenage girl. Mm. Again, allowed to be out for exercise, good for her, but... I try, sometimes in these woods it's quite narrow paths I try to stay very much off to the side social distancing she just Plow, oblivious yeah. plows right down the middle and it's just it's a bit selfish a bit disrespectful and we all need to be doing our bit Yeah. and it's very frustrating if you're trying to really be quite strict yourself and stick to the rules yeah. and uh, and I guess some people are just taking this a lot more seriously than others uh, yeah. and maybe we're on the slightly more uh, nervous and Again, panicky side end of the spectrum but I would rather be on that end of the spectrum and again it's just a good rule for life generally is is not 
not get too close to a teenage girl that you don't know. It's just in a good rule for woods, life is in the woods. Particularly. That's, that's not just for lockdown. <laughs> no. That's for life. Good, good tip. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and I had a similar experience. Um, so I, um, because Chris is, we're, we've got until Wednesday before Chris is allowed to go to the shops. I hate going to the shops. Um, I don't particularly like shopping uh, the best of times, but, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but yeah, at the moment I'm finding um, the shops just very a tense experience. I don't like it. Now, the local Tesco is being very good. They've got sort of a queuing system outside with the mark, so with marking so that there's not too many people in the shop at one time. Uh, they've got like a cleaning station for the handles of the baskets in your trolley. So like, it's not really big enough when they've got like one trolley for, I guess, people who can't carry stuff. Um, but yeah, for like your bits and bobs. Uh, and they are sort of policing that quite well. They've got somebody telling you when you can come in. All of that's very good. And it's nice to see that those measures are being taken. However, I find the whole experience quite stressful anyway because I'm sort of th like, I guess there's extra pressure because I'm like, well, I'm not going to be able to, I can't go to another shop. I can't get in the car and go get, pick up something somewhere else. I can't order stuff online. Is it going to have the stuff that I need? Um, I, I like, I think I mentioned before, I get a bit panicky about getting the wrong stuff for you because it's the like meats or eggs or cheese that I get the wrong thing. Um, and finding that sort of because you know that people are waiting to get past they've marked out um sort of tape with tape on the floor boxes of two meters so that you know as a guideline where you need to be but if you're sort of trying to go past someone because they're looking at stuff it's quite hard to sort of nip past and keep your distance also if you're having to choose something and I, there's me sort of looking at all the different bits going I don't know what it is I don't know what any of this is um and getting a bit stressed and sort of trying to decide what to get and you see that there's somebody waiting to come past you I find that a bit stressy because I'm like oh I'm in the way but I need to stop it so I just like it's hard to social distance anywhere that's got sort of a set sized aisle like you, the aisle isn't two meters wide so if you need to pass them when you have to come within two meters and i'm very aware that i'm being like hyper vigilant but other people are just sort of sauntering about and i'm like ah uh, but maybe i'm being the dickhead there maybe as long as you just sort of nipping past it's okay but i'm just being very conscious mm -hmm. so i find the whole thing very stressful and yeah it was a bit ridiculous today because i legitimately and i like i've mentioned before in the past i've had some like mental health wobbles um and for the most part they're they're a thing of the past slash very well controlled but every now and again this whole situation is causing little things to bubble up and today on my way to the shop I did feel like I was gonna have a panic attack <laughs> just about going to the shop I didn't have a panic attack I just had that little slightly like oh, can't quite can't quite catch your breath feeling and just this sense of impending dread um but it didn't actually come to anything and I felt relieved once I got out of the shop and it was fine and I got home and it all was well but like this is what I mean is a something as simple as a trip to the shops is something that is causing a lot of uh, anxiety at the moment and that sort of oh, I keep saying sort of loads um I should never watch these I just find out loads of little mannerisms of myself that I hate <laughs> so I don't recommend doing this by the way guys uh no I am joking I'm finding these quite helpful because as I've mentioned before I think they punctuate my day and give yeah. me a sense of like oh well at least I can <laughs> talk about I'm that I'm the finding blog. them quite helpful because finally she's weeding out some of those mannerisms so that's, <laughs> how that's dare you boom. how dare you uh <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm going to ramp them up now, just for but, you. I'll, uh, I'll save them for when I'm not on camera. Because well, I've not been able to go to the shop mm. in uh, a while now. About because, 10 days now, I think. Because it's self-isolating. Yeah, and, for, if it's Wednesday, and, uh, you can. I, I've got to admit, I've been kind of sort of thinking of it almost as a, as a treat and something to look forward to, being able to go to the shop, which is such a, in the normal run of things, is such an ordinary thing to do. The idea mm. that you would think of it... A Even treat. the treat feels a bit silly. But... Uh, yeah, I've taken the edge off that though, haven't I? Well, <laughs> I've not, not been that. telling it. <laughs> I mean, but that's the thing. I, I've kind of last couple of days, are right, I because I haven't been to a shop since it's been kind of quite so strict on the lockdown. Mm. Since they've had some some of these measures in place, so I, it's it's yeah, it's only my be, second time. It's going to be a very so... different experience to what I remember, what I'm used to, and and also we know people on the other side of it. Um, people who actually work in the supermarkets at the minute who don't necessarily want to be there but they know they have to keep going in and kind of and and they're doing a job that supports all of us and unlike the NHS who are getting people you know just fly, fly, so 
you know, are getting people clapping in the streets and well done the NHS, they deserve all the support, but uh, the people in the supermarkets often facing abuse and probably uh, on crappy contracts tension. and low yeah, pay and, and being treated pretty crap and um and, uh, someone we know i don't i'm not necessarily going to name any names or kind but uh some someone we know who works in the supermarket pointing out that some people are coming in and just treating the shops as a treat as a chance to get out yeah and rather than just going in and getting what they need are just really kind of browsing, browsing and, and, taking, their and time, taking their time and and they just if they work in, if people working in the supermarkets they just they understand you want to come in you want to get your stuff that you need and maybe you want to get some stuff that's a bit treaty as well because you're a bit bored you're stuck in the house and this and, is yeah. your chance to get something nice to eat whatever it may be as well as this but you know don't spend forever browsing and also there's people queuing outside you know you will have to wait to get in right mm. so you know there's other people who are also waiting to get in and they want their go so. Yeah. It's, I think we just yeah, need it's... everybody to just be a little bit more aware and considerate of everybody else around them in lots of little minor ways that previously oh. you haven't had to be mindful of. So, yeah, for example, yeah, if you spend it like we aren't able to go to the supermarket because we can't drive. So yeah. we've only got the local shops to deal with and, you know, making the best of it. But if you can go to the supermarket, yeah, bear in mind there are people queuing outside the queues look very impressive and long because they are two metres apart, so they go quite a long way. Um, and, yeah, so if you're in there, and I get it, like, you, it might be the only time you're getting out that day and you've been looking at the same four walls of your living room for the rest of the time and feeling a bit stir-crazy. But just, we need everybody to just be considerate at the moment. Um, and, and, it's... and all it takes is the small minority of people who are just flouting it, which is going to mean that I think they are going to have to be stricter on us. I'm curious as to know exactly what those harsher restrictions might be. Because if that is, you can't go out for exercise, you can literally only go out to go to or from the shops or to or from work. What happens to dog walking? Um, yeah, that's kind of a primary concern. For yeah, us. like poor old Lucy, like she needs to well do her business for a start. But um, uh, and yeah, it's sort of like well, if it's just people being idiots about it, that means that then actually everybody is going to have to be much harsher um, lockdown and not be really allowed out. Um, then that's gonna that's gonna be even tougher because to be honest, this is already pretty tough. And and we are saying that from a relatively privileged position, as I've mentioned, we've got a garden for example mm. so you can at least sit outside and the weather is nice at the moment i do really understand that that's luring people out um but yeah just just try not to be dicks about it. but i i suspect as i've said um it doesn't really matter now if everybody does behave themselves i think they're gearing up for harsher measures maybe uh, and maybe that's what's needed to flatten this curve and if that's what like i, I think we just have to suck it up nobody's enjoying this um, I think everybody would rather be able to go back to normal and, and, but we kind of have to look at it as the sooner we do all do this, the sooner maybe we can relax it. Well, just to come back Hopefully. to the, the shop, the point about shopping as well, yeah. is that it's obviously, they've said we can have one exercise a day mm. or you can go to the shops and, and that's such a grey area. It's hard to kind of, um, define how often or how much you can go to the shop and what is an essential shop and, and it's... Mm. And because it's a grey area, it's open to kind of interpretation. It's also open to abuse a bit. And, um, like, I Yeah, saw you're actually, someone... maybe you're just having a wander, and then you're like, oh, it's okay, I'm on my way to the shop. And like, are you? <laughs> I, I saw someone today, uh, as I was coming home from walking the dog, I saw someone walking down the street with a two-litre bottle of Coke under their arm and no other shopping. So they've just gone to the shops to get just some Just for a bottle Coke. of Coke. And I think you've got to make one of two choices there. Either you say, well, do you know what? I don't, don't need, need the coke. coke that badly, or you go. Hey, while I'm at the shop, I might as coke, well replenish a few other I'll things the, so that I don't have to go yeah, back I'll get again. The cereal tomorrow. and the eggs and the milk, whatever it is you need, so that you don't have to then make a separate trip out to buy a mm. bunch of other stuff. Yeah, just because you can go to the shops and you can exercise once a day, like you don't mm. have to go every day. Try to minimise it and maybe just go when you need to and get all the stuff you need. So today, um, Ellie was trying to get some ingredients for some recipes, some stuff for some meals, but also some snacky bits as well, because we know we can't just go to the shops to buy a Twix if we fancy no. it for a bag of crisps. So... Trouble is, I do bring them all home and then eat them all, just because I've got them, because uh, it's all the little pleasures in life at the moment. Hey, little puppet. Yeah. Hello. There's a cat. 
Um, so yeah, so just, yeah, that's, that's what's going on with social distancing there. So we'll find out what's going on with uh, Boris, but we'll have to report back on that tomorrow. Should we go um, for something a bit brighter yeah. now? Um, well, I think maybe we could we could talk about uh, the well, we, what we were talking about a lot yesterday, which it's, was the impending WrestleMania. It's halfway through WrestleMania weekend, guys. Hey! I presume you all watched it last night. <laughs> all I of you. I presume we were all going to watch it tonight, although by the time you see this... It may well have already happened, depending on how quickly we get this uploaded. Um, it's going to be from like midnight Sunday till 3am Sunday. Uh, I know we're talking about it a lot, but it is one weekend a year. I've already t it explained to you... It is the weekend of your year, isn't I've it? I've already explained to you all why you should be watching it. <laughs> if you're not on board by now and you're not really following this, it's your own fault. So, um, yeah. And, and by Monday, we can all go back to our miserable mundane lives. <laughs> but this weekend is WrestleMania weekend. It's yeah. happening. Um... Ah, no. right, so I want to just sort of weigh in on that, because I've never watched a WrestleMania before, mm. and I did not really know what to expect. I have to say, quite enjoyed it. It mm. was weird, it is weird, um, some, but actually, there's some bits that have sort of been forced by having, like, no big crowds, that means that um, it sort of changes the performance a bit, but you can hear what the wrestlers are saying, you can sort of hear the... Well, they've got to be a bit more mindful to make sure that you hear the punches and kicks and things land, which normally you can hide that probably a bit better. But I found it sort of a bit more dramatic. I quite liked that you can sort of hear more of what's going on. Um, at, at times, though, it was strange, like sort of when they're coming out to sort of like, particularly if they're like defending a belt or something and they're coming out and they hold the belt up and be like, 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 who are you doing that to? There's yeah. nobody there. <laughs> like The weird thing for me is there are a couple of title changes. Yeah. And people are sort of, you know, they they have the pin, they the bell rings, they're celebrating, and there's not a crowd to kind of give that cheer yeah. of elation of, congr like, you know, or Or that shock, ecstatic, or that, like, oh, my God. Yeah, ooh, that like, ecstatic yeah. moment of a it, belt changing so, hands, and it didn't... Yeah, I think um, the actual matches themselves, mm. I enjoy more mm. because you can really see the detail of what's going on and hear the detail of what's going on. But yeah, the sort of build up to and reaction to uh, the matches, I think, fall a little bit flat and a bit strange. But I was actually surprised by a couple of things. I thought there was going to be more kind of hype packages, kind of building up some of the matches a bit more on the night, kind of explaining the stories a bit more. I was surprised they didn't do more of that. But the other thing that mostly surprised me was actually how good it was. I mean, I thought it was going to be entertaining on some level, but I thought there might be bits of it that were laughable. I thought it might be, to some extent, a car crash. And actually, I think they kind of pulled it off. It wasn't. Off. It wasn't. If anything, I was sort of hoping it was going to be a bit more of a car crash at times. Like, um, it wasn't as odd and weird. Uh, it was different, and they mm. sort of acknowledged that. Um, I but don't know... It, I much... think it still sort of landed. I, think, I don't know like... how much of this because obviously it wasn't in a stadium; it was in like a little performance center. I I uh, don't know how much of this is me and sort of other fans like me on the internet, um, kind of hyping ourselves up for the weekend. But for me, it still had a sense of occasion yeah. to it. Um, um, and actually, I sort of I th I don't think it didn't work I, like I, th I liked it I think it, it, it was quite uh, intimate I right. guess but you really sort of felt like yeah I think it still had a real sense of occasion about it um, and there's definitely a few memorable moments that are going to be yeah won't say what they were because people might I you guess still, be you can still sign up for the network, up and, guys. Yeah. You can still um, check it out. But actually, there were free. a few things that I was just like, oh, oh does, has that ever happened before? And Chris was going, that's never happened before. So there were a few moments that actually I thought, well, that's that's nicely dramatic. I like that. Um, oh, yeah. I And also, yeah, I didn't really know who people were. Uh, and a couple of times I did sort of have to be like, okay, so like I, uh, you can tell pretty quickly who you're supposed to be rooting for at any given moment. Um, but I, yeah, it was handy to have you so I could go like, what's this? What's the deal here? Because you, like you say, they didn't actually all. Some of the matches were very well hyped up, and I think maybe they're the ones that they knew were leading to this story. And there were one or two other matches that they kind of had to make a swift change because there was a wrestler that was supposed to be wrestling that he's actually off sick. I would say um, that's my biggest kind of disappointment of the night. Uh, and it, I don't want to be churlish because I think they did a good job overall, but there were some hype packages for the bigger matches. It wouldn't have taken much to have, you know, it's, social distancing is fine, you need one man in an editing suite. They probably could have done it from home with the software you get these days and just made up some packages, just 
putting together some promos or something just to kind of hype up some of the matches a bit more. Yeah. Because um, there were so there were one or two, well one sort of strings of mind that was a bit like well um, sort of I don't really get why these guys are even fighting. Lucky but, for Ellie, she had me here. Yes. So. I I generally think that's at the moment. That lucky. No, not everyone is that like uh, you you joke, but actually um, overall in general, I've sort of mentioned this a few times, but. Um, I'm so very grateful that I've got you here while we're doing lockdown. And I did think, and we sort of had a chat about this yesterday, I was a bit, um, I, can't, I was aware that, oh, this might be a bit testing. Because, um, we, like we were saying, well, it was the day the lockdown went sort of firm for us was actually the 20th, which was our one year anniversary from the day we met. Um, so we've never sort of lived quite so intensively in, in each other's pockets because we've always been going to work and things so this is new um and i think like i've said uh, like i think it is make or break time for quite a lot of relationships thankfully um and i feel like slightly uh, like it's a bit unfair really like we're cheating a bit because actually the aspect of spending all this time with you has been really lovely <laughs> um it's it's been a pleasure um and yeah i'm so very glad that i've got you for this because i think even though i'm pretty content in my own company usually mm. i think like only having your own company for well what day are we are with so two, we're more than two weeks in now i think i'd be feeling a bit loopy by now and i'm refusing to shave and i'm not washing my hair enough imagine what great company i'd be if i was making an effort <laughs> i do wish you'd shave uh <laughs> I just want to see what happens next. I know you know what happens next. That gets longer. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen it much longer than this. <laughs> Can it grow much longer than that? I don't know. <laughs> this is what I might find out in the name of science. All right, fine. So, um, but it's just, not a deal breaker, but I tell you I've what, expressed though, my opinions. I think fairly enough there. Just to swiftly bring it back to WrestleMania. Okay. Uh, and I know you're thinking God is talking enough about WrestleMania, <laughs> and I have, but only to say. If you are the sort of person who is into wrestling, or uh, it could be any other, uh, like American football, NBA, basketball, basically anything that happens in a different part of the world, in a different time zone, and you're thinking, right, I want to get my partner into this with me, and I want them to watch it and enjoy it with me, and maybe it's a kind of a niche thing, already that's one hurdle, just persuading them it's worth watching, another hurdle you'll be familiar with is just knowing, well, this starts at midnight and it's going to go on until sort of three, four, uh, well, the previous year's WrestleMania, last year's WrestleMania went on for about seven hours. So, <laughs> so that was insane. But, um, so just knowing it's going to go on that late is a bit of a stumbling block for kind of getting anyone else to show an interest. But, I mean, we've gone so nocturnal. Yeah. Not only was that not a problem, but Ellie actually stayed up <laughs> After WrestleMania, yeah, it to wasn't even the end. Yeah, it wasn't the end of my day. Yeah. Um, that wasn't planned. Um, that was a nice surprise. But actually, yeah, WrestleMania had finished, and we weren't sort of like particularly gearing up to go to bed at that point. We were sort of just hanging out. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I got a message uh, on uh, Facebook from uh, a, a very good friend of mine that I haven't seen for literally years. Um, but I went to, well, I met her while I was at university and haven't seen her, I've seen her once since university in person. Um, but yeah, she sent me a message and she was just like, I see that you're online, uh, might be mental, but fancy a glass of wine and a chat? And I was like, yes, I do. And so then I did. And I think it was about 7am when I went to bed. Um... So yeah, I've gone full lock turtle. It, it was getting light. I'm not sure what time it was, but it was getting light. And that was, and to be honest, we could have carried on, but I just, when it starts to get light, I was like, oh, I, I should go to bed. And thankfully my phone made the decision for me. It ran out of battery. And then I thought, well, now is the time to just go to bed. So I plugged it in so I could message her and apologize for disappearing. And I went to bed. Um, uh, but yeah, it's uh, that was actually really lovely, and that really did feel like a proper face to face catch up. It oh. was very nice. Uh, but yeah, that's not normal rules, is it? Like you don't start that. Uh, I think it was probably about four um, when we started that chat. Um, which, to be fair, is kind of like this is allowing me to live uh, my ideal sleep pattern life. I think I essentially am nocturnal. Uh, daytime is bullshit. Uh, mornings particularly are bullshit. Um, but 
yeah, it was uh, that was a weird a weird turn of events, but very nice. Uh, and but yeah, further proof of sort of just the fact that normal real world rules don't apply. But it, I was encouraged by the fact that that was her suggestion, not mine. I know that I'm weird. It's quite comforting to know that lots of other people are being equally weird. And a few people I know have sort of said that their sleep patterns have gone de um, that they're sort of sleeping in chunks, sort of a few different chunks per day, rather than having like one long night's sleep. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, not having to get up to B places. Obviously, some people are still working. I think that's uh, my friend, uh, her fella is still working, but from home. So he is still keeping normal office hours. And I think she's just fully switched to like, yeah, no, I'm up at night and sleep in the day while he's working because at the night I've got him for company. In the day, I'm just sort of sitting on my hands. So yeah, I'll just uh, sleep. <laughs> so, fine. Um, can't really argue with that. Um, we probably need to draw that to a conclusion we do. there. This will be the first, uh, first one of these in a few days that won't be in two parts. Yes. Which is good, isn't it? Which has been due to factors beyond our control. Well, but, mm, well, they the were point. in our control to an extent, but we flouted them. But the point being that that was never the plan, and, and uh, yeah, we don't want to make a habit of that. Two, but yeah. two parts a day feels indulgent. Yeah. Um, so but yeah, well, now I've uh, got room on my phone. We should be able to just do them in one stretch. So yeah, yesterday was a tech fail. Uh, the day before was a us fail. <laughs> There we go. Uh, so we'll try and keep these back to one at a, one at a time. Uh, so uh, we did actually have a few more bits to cover today as well, which we haven't quite got to, but we will talk about it tomorrow and also find out what's going on with Boris. So uh, cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs>